So I recently went to a trip to St. Catharines, Ontario, and I ended up bringing the Panasonic G9 II with the Leica 200 Miltonia 2.8 Prime with the 1.4 times teleconverter. Got a bunch of wildlife and several scenarios to see is this the ultimate travel wildlife setup? It did hurt. It was painfully heavy. All I want is the perfect camera. All I want is the perfect camera. I boomed a lav mic. They said it couldn't be done. Um, don't pretend you can see it in the shot. So we have a bunch of footage to get to, and I want to compare it a bit to the Sony Desert. This is also going to be a Las Vegas Desert versus Ontario, Canada video. G Master 70 to 200 versus the Leica 200 Prime. Wow. I went to a beautiful creek. It's called the 12 Mile Creek Trail or something. And it's like you can walk on each side of it, and it felt very secluded. There were people fishing in the polluted river for some reason, but whatever. They don't mind growing third arms, and that's fine. Nuclear fallout is delicious. I saw a duck, a king duck, cormorant type of thing, and he flew away, and I noticed my stabilization techniques were abysmal. I was surprised. 200 mil, this is all with the teleconverter so far. It's a little shaky, and the autofocus was tracking him. That was 4K 60p. It kind of hunted a little bit, but that was like an impossible scenario. Here's an interesting test. I saw this magical mist floating. I was like, is there a waterfall from heaven? So I'm looking up, penning up, waiting to see the source of this beautiful river of life. It was actually just a couple of jabronis up on a thing. And then I pixel to pixel HD'd your ass. That was some reach, man. Like, I could barely see them with my physical eyes. This is HD 120 in pixel to pixel mode. Wow. And then I stabilized, locked it off in DaVinci for a tripod mode. Uh, huh? It's totally doable. That's like a 9,000 millimeter lens right there. I finally saw a northern flicker for 0.6 of a second. He left my life immediately. I was like, oh, I'm gonna get it. Nope. But I did get it, just not for long. It was beautifully sharp. You have to admit that. Here's a fascinating somehow comparison of two cricket grasshopper-like things. One flew away from me, one leaped for mankind. Was the angle fair? No, it wasn't. And on the Panasonic, I actually got down low to the ground, had a cinematic touch. Now, I'm not sure if grasshoppers only have one giant spring leg that they jump with, or if this one was missing the other leg. Do they have two of those springer things, or just one? We learned something here. But hot damn, I tell you, that combo is so sharp. That Leica Prime and the teleconverter, it ends up being like a 280 Tony 4 lens. So we're talking 560 mil Tony 8. Wow, full frame equivalent, that, that sunk hard deep. That really downfalls off a cliff, those toniatures. Ouch, but like there's plenty enough blur, kind of. Here's a very fascinating comparison. I saw what looked like a tarantula, even though it was tiny. It looked bigger, I mean smaller in real life. It looks huge now. <laughs> I didn't know those things even existed in Canada. I'm afraid to ever go back to that city, but whatever. We have ants working together, carrying crackers to their grandmothers, and we have a spider rudely trying to end someone's life, most likely. So, Canada insects are rude, Las Vegas insects work together for freedom, and that's a whole thing. On my other channel, I did a whole vlog, and then I made this little sequence where it looked like the spider was chasing that grasshopper even though they happened like hours apart and in completely different areas of the town. But I deceived my audience for the benefit of mankind. How's the lav mic? Boomed. Can you see it? No. Don't pretend. Little pro tip for you. Film the lav mic out of the shot like so. Then you copy that piece 
And then what, what lav mic? As long as you don't go near there, you're fine, aren't you? Yeah, you are. If you do, though... Did you hear my hair rubbing on the mic? I'll move on. 300 frames per second. This bee, I've never in my life seen bee legs wiggling. Have you? They're vibrating and they're wiggling. It was so incredible. 300 frames per second is the truth. And Panasonic reps are trying to tell me, oh, nobody needs past 120. Look at that beauty, the wiggling legs of bees. You didn't know you needed that in your life, but you clearly did. He even straightened them. He straightened his legs and then disappeared from my life. That's the kind of life I want. If you're wondering why or have even noticed that my top lip is like swollen and blistered, it's because I tried a poisonous berry while in St. Catherine that was just, I saw these berries, I'm like all excited because I found wild grapes and then a wild pear tree and I'm like, oh my God, what else can I? And so like usually there's a lot of poisonous berries. You don't just try one. But this one, I was like, I squeezed it in my hand. I was like, okay, my hand's not burning. Little taste on the tongue. I was like, that's gross. It was astringent and wrong tasting. So I knew immediately that was bad. Spit it out. My lips were kind of stinging <laughs> for a while. And now I have this huge blister here. That was insane. So don't pick berry trees this wasn't even the one that i picked i don't know why i filmed that one but whatever it was beautiful and i wanted to eat that one too but i got afraid i actually noticed a guy out in the wild he was using a fuji camera and i started to film him and he noticed me and i was like uh-oh he he's not gonna come kill me is he he seems pleasant enough but he started moving towards me in 300 frames per second and I could totally manually focus and keep up with him. I didn't immediately lose him. I just was fearful for my life. And I was like, which direction do you focus? I, I didn't know at the time and I still don't. I did finally regain his attention just before he came and kicked me in the shins. But he, he seemed angrier than usual. Is that normal for Fuji shooters? Is it because their Ibis is so shaky? I do believe that is why but yeah, that kind of really sucks that you cannot track anything in 300 frames. When it comes to Panasonic autofocus, I have noticed if we're in 4K 120p, it now latches on for some reason. And I'm saddened by this. The Panasonic Pony of Hope is trying to actualize itself in the third dimension, but he doesn't want to do it. He, he needs... 480 frames per second to really desire spending time with mankind. He doesn't want to be here for a quick second. He wants to stay for a while in 480 frames per second in the GH6S. Here's an interesting contrast of the Canadian waterfall wilderness wetness versus the desert land and the heat, the mountains versus the rain. We actually get water, so some plants and other shrub type things can exist here. In Las Vegas, the rocks are baked at 900 degrees for 72 hours a day. It's a baked land, it's hot, but the beauty and the magic was there. One of the only things I saw that day in the desert was this giant hornet thing with orange warning wings that, I don't know, he could have killed me at any second. Freaking hornet freak. That's as close as I got to anything with the 200 mil. Oh man, you G master bitch. Funnily enough, I saw a very similar hornet <laughs> in Canada and he also wanted to kill me and he was much closer. So it's not a very fair comparison, but whatever. We have both of the same evil trying to kill you insects, tarantulas this little freak thing that's searching with antennas that just looks wrong and snaky snake-like has two snakes on his head that's not fair but the reality is that las vegas and saint catharines can get along we are more similar than different all of us are we all have our little quirks but we all have good hearts in there we all wish well for one another so what's your problem if you're a cannon shooter Fuji, whatever, man, let's, 
Let's get together. When it comes to low light on the G9 II, I'm not like disappointed in any of these shots. Like this was a dark forest. I don't know what ISO that was at, probably max. And it's like, it was okay. Like I, I haven't shot anything on the G9 II where I was like, man, that noise is so ugly and unusable. Like it's all been good. Here's an example. This is what it looked like in camera. Very dark squirrel, Panasonic exposing for the highlights. And he was cute, he was chewing a nut. So if you raise the shadows, like you can bring back a ton of detail and like who cares about noise? I add film grain to all my footage anyway. Like I'm adding noise. Noise has never been the problem. People who like freak out and do like neat noise reduction, they spend like three days rendering their video to get rid of noise, who cares? The most magical footage I've ever gotten was on that Canon R5C in RAW it was so noisy, it was like unusable, but I didn't mind it. It was still sharp and looked cool. You freak. I mean, Sony will bring back the shadows with probably more detail. So full frame does still have its advantages, but it's very heavy to get those advantages. And maybe the noise patterns, if you ever find yourself at 10,000 ISO, your shot's basically ruined because it's fugly noise. It's not even nice noise. It's like banding noise and elongated stripes and like terrible things. Just like the Fuji X-H2S in 240 frames per second, you go above ISO 640, you start seeing creepy shit. One thing I will say that's super annoying, don't quote me on this because maybe I have a setting wrong in my G9 II, but you can't seem to go above ISO 3200 in 4K 120 or HD 240 or... 300 or 120 no in the menu auto look at it read it and weep it goes up to 3200 and that's it so like i just noticed a bunch of my shots getting real dark real fast so that's why it's not very noisy because they limit you that's painful so like 4k 24p you can go up to 12,800 iso no problem even that seemed pretty limiting but then you go into slow-mo and it's like less than a fourth, something like that math-wise. Now, while this setup is a little heavy, stupid heavy, considering that it's micro four thirds with the heavy body and the heavy lens, it's such a magical combo. I'm not so sure about the teleconverter because when you manually focus, it's no longer linear focus. That's really annoying. And I don't think they can even update it or they certainly haven't. So it's like, if you just have this, cool, sell your teleconverter, you got your 400 mil prime, and then you can pixel to pixel, crazy reach. And then like, you got some stuff, it's worse quality when you do that, but whatever. Your ISO 3200 should take care of it. I still prefer using my Sony for whatever reason, just getting the shot in focus seems to be easier, no matter what. I can autofocus, manual is better, linear it's like perfect i just like it more and i like the 200 to 600 range having that versatility versa prime and panasonic's 100 to 400 is not up to my standards it's okay uh, it's a little heavy it's not like the stiff zoom eh. i just really wish they would come out with a 100 to 300 pro lens tony 4 just show me how big that is first. If it's too big, okay, we'd knock it down to 5.6, but no lower. That might be something. I know Olympus is coming out with like a 50 to 250 and like some stupid shit that will not sync stable with the Panasonic. So it's like work together, assholes, or cease to exist. Thank you for watching. What'd you think of the footage? Who won? Vegas or Ontario? I think you have more chance of dying in Vegas. There's that to think about, and boomed lav mics are a thing. Something's wrong with my mic again. The stupid octave of Russian technology always falters. Damn you. How you doing? You subscribing for more videos? See you later.